In this video, we're going to have a look at the new Effective Permissions option within NetTools. Now, this option is uh, useful for seeing um, if you want to try and work out uh, what permissions a, a user or a group may have over objects within the Active Directory. Um, this is particularly useful if you're actually doing a delegation model and you want to try and work out by changing the permissions what access that uh, you know a service desk may have to a set of users and able to actually manage those, reset passwords, update details within um, that user's account. So the actual option exists in a couple of different places in NetTools, but um, the easiest way to actually use it is if we actually do the quick search. So if you search for the user, you want to check their permissions to see what access they have to the Active Directory. So we'll search for that user. And then from there, um, if we do the use with and then do effective permissions, what this will do is it still take us to um, the AD permissions browser and it's already loaded your trustee in. Now you can actually do this manually, but this just does it automatically for you by if you go to the Active Directory AD permissions browser option and you do the trustee button, you click on there, you can specify it. Just the, the use with option sets up for you. So, so just by selecting that user, it loads it, sets the trustee and then we can now browse. Now, what we're seeing here is that the view gets filtered. Um, so the top permissions view. So normally this would show you all the actual permissions which apply to it, uh, been applied to the, this, uh, the root in this case. But when you've actually got the trustee option selected, the, the, the ACLs get um, filtered. So what we have is that we've shown two different types of uh, ACLs here, one with a green tick and one with a yellow tick. Now the green ticks um, means that that permission applies directly to this object and that permission um, is used to define the access to that object. Whereas yellow permissions, the permission applies to the user, the trustee itself, but it's not actually applied to this, this object itself, normally because it's, it's, it's actually an inherited permission or a permission which will be inherited further down the tree. And as we can see here, this says descendant users. So, this will be, so when you actually have a user created underneath this level, then this permission will be um, set on those users. Now, in the bottom part we got here, this set shows us um, the actual effective permissions. So looking at this trustee, which is G Reynolds, looking at what the permissions are actually uh, applied to this user, we then get a view of what permissions this user has to do within the Active Directory. Now, this view has got a couple of different sections. So we've got the permissions section here, which is talking about or refers to the permissions which appear in the, in the standard sort of basic permissions dialog box. Then it shows you what extended rights are, um, which are applicable to this object, which this user can actually um, change or use. Um, and then from this particular use, from the user against this object, what, what objects they can create or delete under it. Now this has got the um, prevent accidental deletion option turned on. So we're seeing the everyone denied. So this has got a cross against it saying it's denied. Um, and then we also got um, the property sets and attributes. Now, as we go through this, you'll see that this icon, this column here tells you what you've actually got. At the moment, it's filtered to show you only what is set. But if we show all, we can see which permissions um, we have got and also which ones we didn't actually get. So which ones have actually been um, uh, not set against this uh, particular trustee for these objects. So we can also change this to actually filter. So we can actually look at what permissions are actually been blocked allowed. So we can actually filter the view. Um, now, once once you've actually got the filter view, there's a couple of different options which you can do here. So as you click on these, it actually selects the corresponding permission at the top, which is actually that's applied to. So when we actually go through, this one's a quite simple one. There's only a few permissions which are set. But we can see as we click through these various options, which one is actually responsible for setting that. Now, we've got two columns here which lists um, the permissions above. This effective permission or effective trustee is the permission which actually finally won and is being applied. Now, if you've got multiple permissions applied, as in the case with this one here, we can see that we had, um, you know, three different permissions which were applied to read all. And that's a combination of this one, that one read properties, and probably another one up here, which I can't quite see at the moment, probably one of these, which allowing it to actually read um, those permissions. Um, 
Now what we can do is if, if we click on this, it, it shows you the corresponding one up there. But also what we can do is that if we double click on an entry up here, it will show you what permissions that particular permission will have applied and what effective rights are actually associated to that one. So as you scroll through, you can see that, you know, what permissions are being applied by um, each one of those um, permissions down there. So what you can actually see. Now, as we scroll through, so let me just open this up so we can actually look at um, a little bit more sort of typical use case in terms of delegation. So in this particular um, permission, if we just go back a sec, we'll just remove the trustee and show the permissions on here because this is a good example of actually how we can see that that um, that layered permissions and which ones actually wins. So what we've got here is that we've got on on this test one um, OU, we've got a deny permission, which is actually preventing um, this deny mem uh, deny enough group from reading the um, uh, the IP phone attribute. And that's a descendant to all users. Um, so if we click on a user down here, we can actually then see that this has been applied. So, you know, there's a, a level of expectation that use that it, members of that group won't be able to actually read uh, the iPhone. Now, due to the way the, the inherited permissions actually get applied, what we'll do is we'll just do a check against this, this particular group. So we'll go back into trustee. We'll select this this group and now we're actually looking at what permissions actually applied to this so if we scroll down we can see that um, it hasn't actually been died it's actually got a read um, so essentially this user is actually allowed to read it even though there is an explicit delight deny and the reason for that is because the, the permissions are applied um, have different precedents based on whether they're actually applied directly or whether they're inherited so in this case the iPhone um, entry, we can see it's been inherited. And if we double click on it, we can see that it actually does actually do the blocking. But when we actually, so if we just reset the view again, we can see that that iPhone, the IP phone is not actually allowed to be, is, is actually being allowed to read. So the block is not actually um, taking precedence. Now, when we click on this, we can now see that this permission is taking precedence. This is the permission which is actually giving us that access and we can actually read it. Now, the reason why this is working, this doesn't actually mention the IP phone, but the personal information is property set. And property sets is, is a, a shortcut way of actually assigning a set of permissions to a group of attributes. Um, so you reduce it, the size of the number of ACLs which you need to set. Now, so if we want to see what this personal information one is, if we go and have a look at our access control rights and we refresh this and we go down and have a look at personal information, we can see that the IP, IP phone, sorry about that, the IP phone is actually listed. Um, so when that, when that permission gets applied to this user in terms of this personal uh, information, that is actually applying that to uh, the IP phone as well. So when we click on here, um, by just showing what permissions this will be uh, setting, we can see that the IP phone will be set to read. And we can see all those all those um, attributes which are listed in the property set we just looked at um, are being set as well. So they get set. Now, that's the quick look at the permissions. Um, but what we can actually do with the, the effective uh, permissions pieces that we can actually use this to model. Now, if you're doing a, um, a service desk delegation model, or you want to try and see what a change to a user would actually uh, happen. So let's just change this back to our original user again. That's our selected trustee. So when we actually select this, this actually displays the, um, the user's access token. And it's a it's a simulated access token. Um, so what we're actually going here is the group memberships and then some additional groups which get added as part of what would be your authentication token or access token. Now we can actually use this dialog box to actually model um, different permissions. So for instance, we can actually add domain admins. Bit of a sledgehammer option this one is, but we can actually see what the impact is. That's now added domain ad admins for us. Um, it would have done it if I clicked it. Let's try that again.
So that's added domain admins for us. And if we go back now, we can now see that you know domain admins has given us a lot of access, a lot of right access to this this object. And if we click on here, we can see that we've got full control. Now, obviously, this is not a very realistic one because everybody knows you've put them in domain admins, they're getting access to everything. But if you had a delegation model where you had uh, slightly more nuanced positions into uh, permissions in terms of you wanted to say, you know, can they reset a password? Can they uh, update their their employee uh, number descriptions and so forth? So you might have different permissions, but you can also use this option to do the other way. So if you want to reduce someone's permissions, so for instance, if we take out um, domain admins now, now when you actually run it, you can now see what that impact was. Now, obviously for this particular user, there's not much of an impact, but for instance, if we actually, uh, if we look at this one and we say, okay, we're gonna remove the reset password one. So we remove the reset password and we can now see that we've lost that right. So this user can no longer reset password on this object. So you can use this function to actually model changes. So if you want to do your delegation model or you want to try and restrict your delegation model in terms of working out why people are getting certain permissions or why you want to reduce those permissions, you can use this model functionality to actually then, um, by removing certain memberships or changing certain memberships, you can see how that would affect the, um, the ability of that user to actually perform their job or actually if you want to restrict something so how would you actually reduce those permissions so it's quite quite useful for that so that's that's one view of the effective permissions so if we go back to the quick search as well it's, it's also available in the permissions dialog and if we go to the permissions dialog we've got an effective rights tab and this is exactly the same as what's on uh, ad permission browser so we select our our user and once we've selected our user um, we get the same view here so we can actually see um, the permissions against this particular user so we get exactly the same functionality so this is actually looking at itself okay that's about it for this video thank you